Hello, 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 and welcome to the 420 Project podcast. This is the first ever podcast we are doing. My name is Sean. It's actually the second, sorry. Sorry to interrupt in the interview. Oh, here we go. I'd just like to state that we <laughs> went through the last 40 minute fucking podcast and Sean <laughs> fucked up and did not press the start button. Just, just to put it simply, I mean, there's a longer story. Which we can go into, but this is technically the second podcast, just so you're aware. Okay. And I'm Aaron, and that was Michael for uh, your yes. reference. Alrighty, so. <laughs> and thank welcome you. to 420 Project. And now, we're going to start off tonight by talking about the Las Vegas shooting that happened, where a gunman decided to take over uh, 20 weapons, I believe, um, into a hotel, Mandalay. Mandalay or Mand- Mandalay Bay? Mand- Mandalay yes. Bay. Um, hotel, and he took a couple of hammers in with him. Uh, he smashed out the windows and opened fire on a um, 22,000 uh, people crowd, and there was 58 people who, who have died and well. around 530 people, I from the last time I checked, uh, who had been shot and injured. Um, so I just don't understand why. Yeah. This guy got away with going into a motel with ten suitcases. Mm. How um, how is that yeah, not suspicious? No. I, mean, I understand it's Las Vegas, but seriously, but seriously, 10? ten suitcases for one person. Even if you how are could he rich. carry them all? Like, what, did he have someone else with him? He didn't. I don't think he did. I think he just. I think he took them in over time. I think that's where he got away. I, I reckon that's how he must have done it. He must have taken one or two bags in with him, and done then he of went trips. away. He came back after half a day, brought in another bag. I mean, no one, not, no one I mean, thinks of anyone coming and going from a motel room, do they? I mean, really? Yeah. But um, what I find funny is he was a quite a rich person, mm. and I guess if you rocked up to a hotel in Vegas and bribed enough and said, "I got you know a bit of stuff upstairs that I need to bring." Um, and paid off tips here and there. No one would say a thing. I guess not. If you said, I mean, I've got you... ten bags in the car, can you guys... The bellboys, that's their job. Like, here, I'll, you know, once you take them up, I'll give you a good tip. You probably gave them a good tip. Like, it's just... He just really does not... He doesn't... They're, they're just... The FBI is confused and dumbfounded. He's, he doesn't fit the profile of a yeah. mass shooter. Yeah. He's rich, so he's well off. By all accounts, he seems quite mentally stable. Um, we don't know, obviously. That's just speculation. I don't know. I'm just saying that. Um, the suspicious thing I found was he had bought a ticket for his uh, wife or partner, the Australian uh, Philippines yeah. woman. Um, she's got dual citizenship with the US as well. And he bought her a ticket to the Philippines about mm-hmm. a month ago. Just spur of the moment. That's what she said. So yeah. it's just like, I mean, has he I been planning like... it for that long that he's like, I'm going to get you out of the country so no one thinks that you've got anything to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> that's, um, that's just, uh, it's a strange thing. Mm. And he wired her $100,000 as well <laughs> while she was over there. I just there. don't understand why he had to do it. He's, he's rich. What did he get out of it? Or what does he get from it? You just have to think he he must owe people money. Or what you you think it's fun just to shoot people for the sake nah, of it? No, he, he like a rich cunt like that. Seriously. Exactly. Yeah. Like I know there are people who are really like screwed up in the head, but by all accounts, he seemed like a fairly a regular Joe. regular Joe. Yeah, apart from probably being a rich guy who comes to the casinos and spends quite a bit of money. But yeah, by all accounts, yeah, they just. Even the people at the gun store where he bought the guns, they said he passed all the background checks. So what's what's going on with their background checks? If yeah. a person can actually go in, purchase the guns, pass the background checks, then that store is covered legally by law and then it's not their fault. But he's turned around and gone and shot all these people. Mm. And they feel horrible about it. They probably feel a little bit horrible about it, but at the same time it's like, well, that's our business. We sold the gun. We sell guns. That's our business. I honestly we don't have any feel responsibility scared for it. of a gun. Like, not just being shot at, but, like, holding it and shooting it. Because when Sean and I were on yeah, we our did. honeymoon, mm. we went to Perth and we went to the shooting range there. Mm. And we got to shoot 
we chose a Glock to mm-hmm. sh- 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 shoot. And that was scary and powerful so to hold like, with two hands and, like, fire it and be like, feel the power of it. And it's just yeah. like, shit. And, like, you see TV shows and how they just hold it with one gun and go, like, like that yes. and aim yeah. it. Yeah. And it's like, fuck. It was really scary. And honestly, I don't know if I told Sean this, but when we were doing it, I felt really scared. Yeah. And um, I was just like, I kind of want to just to stop and get out of there. Yeah. But I had enough. But it was like, but it wasn't experience that you I know could about say it. that I've ticked it off my bucket yeah, list yeah, and be yeah. like, yeah, you I've done it. I did it. I understand. It was the, a little scary, I mean, and now I really mm. understand like guns are scary and they shouldn't just be given to anyone. Mm. Um, um, I've done shooting as well. Yeah. Up in the Gold Coast. Oh yeah. Um, I shot a Desert Eagle. Yeah. Fifty five. And wow. a standard US military pistol. I've also shot um, from a rifle. Yeah. yeah. Nice. You shot a rabbit. Um, <laughs> I was pretty good at it. <laughs> but yeah, I honestly don't think everyone should have it. Mm. Not, um, um, well, this, I, I was watching, I, I saw a video from, um, it was actually just before Sandy Hook happened, and I'm pretty sure it was like the day before, and it was a sort of like a town hall. Um, kind of setting with Barack Obama and he was talking about basically the struggle that they have passing any sort of gun control measures or legislation is because of the NRA and the money that they give to the politicians in terms of political donations more like we give you all this money so you better give us some good legislation in the and that's that, that's how their politics um, um uh, seems to work, unfortunately, a lot of the time. But he was just talking about how frustrating it was. And um, a really great point he made, and this was so scary because, it, yeah, it's the... Um, no, it was the um, Pulse nightclub. The Pulse nightclub. It was just before the Pulse nightclub shooting. I apologise, I got confused. Um, and he said that... People who are on the no-fly list can purchase guns legally here. So people who are under suspicion of possible terroristic activities or just they're sketchy people and they're Mm. being watched by the FBI, Mm. they can get a gun, but they can't fly. And I think that's what the Pulse nightclub shooter was. He was also on the no-fly list, but he then purchased guns and went off and shot a... 49 people in that nightclub yeah. um and yeah, yeah i'm i kid you not it was yeah it was it was the day before a shooting and that was what obama was talking I mean, about it should be a catch-22 yeah if you're on the no flight list you should immediately be on the no gun list law. exactly and if you're on the no gun list law you should be immediately on the no fly list law exactly that's how i feel about that should it. It's, it is exactly right that is a really good point to make i mean so I guess, well, what we're talking about now, I guess, is um, what does it mean for America um, and the country as a whole uh, in regards to their gun control? What uh, What's their next step? What can they do? I mean, they could do something about it, but, I mean, how strict do you think they'll ever become like Australia? Yeah, I don't think they ever will, considering no. their Second Amendment Neither. doesn't want them to. Um, yeah. I mean, when you get... Um, have you seen um, a video from the uh, from the shooting? No, you you yeah. tagged me in one, but no, I couldn't I find one. But I found one um, a little while ago. Well, I, it was the same one we did on our first podcast, but uh, yes. because I didn't record it, we're just going <laughs> to show this one again. Um, and it's just um, this woman's perspective at the... Uh, shooting at the concert and um, just in the aftermath of uh, the musician running off stage and uh, what went on. So I'll just play that now. So that's that's the hotel. That's where this gunman is right now. That one there, up there. That's where he is. Yeah. So yeah, she could have easily gotten shot.
Maybe she's just put her phone down. I think she's um, I like think trying she, to yeah, kind of hide. I think she's hiding that woman. But um, yeah, that's um, pretty disturbing. It just sounds like um, oh, what's what's that sound like? Really, it, it's like popcorn. Like not yeah. not in a fun, not trying to be funny, but no, literally that sounds like popping popcorn. That's how fast it was. Like, a, like pop, yeah. pop, 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 pop. Like pellet popcorn. Kind yes. Of, like because yeah. yeah, guns. But yeah. It's just it's, unreal that you'd have to experience anything like that in your life. Um, it, it's hard enough going through um, any sort of like natural disaster, but to have something in being in that situation. You just can't fathom how you would deal with it yourself. It's um, horrible. Mm. And just the fact that, yeah, obviously in those first few moments, they've got no idea where the shots are coming from. So as as we can see, like there was the hotel in the um, the foreground, uh, the background, and um, you just know that's where the shots are coming from, but they don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel absolutely sick about the feeling that me and Amanda were there one and a half months ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, and it's just scary thinking we could have been at that place yeah, at, that time. at the wrong time yeah. and that could have been the outcome. I mean, you never know, but it's just, yeah, it's disgusting to look at. Yeah. It's horrible. It's, it's, I just don't understand how... <sighs> I just, I just can't just, get my head around it. Yeah. When there, was no, when there was no change after the Sandy Hook shootings, I thought, no. Nah. That's it for the America. Yes. They're not going to do anything. Yep. If they if they can look at children, tiny like babies, well not ba- well not babies, but little kids, mm. and see their little smiling faces at their funerals, and they can just look at that and go, mm, and they can maybe we it. should talk about mm, maybe talk about gun control. But it's the same. It's always the same narrative that gets spewed by spe- sorry that gets spewed by the um, gun control lobbyists and the people who love their guns. Mm. Now is not the time to talk about it. Mm. It's, no, we can't politicise this issue. But then again... Um, it's just like they don't want to talk about it at all. Yeah, exactly. So then again, they're just like, at the same time, there's a bill coming through mm. that's saying, hey, let's uh, let's have some silences and suppressors to chuck on the b- bottom of our... Vi- like, on the, on the head of our vehicles. And um, I just... I watched. Oh, this was the this was the reason that I that was given um, from uh, the a pro uh, weapon suppressor guy who was trying to help get it through. He was saying, "Well, when uh, when they fire when people fire guns, um, sometimes the ringing from the gunshot can give them like tinnitus in their head, and they ha- they hear a ringing all the time, and that's really bad for their hearing. So that's why we want." Uh, silences. Mm. It's such a bullshit friggin' excuse. Yes, that can you know happen. What, but you know what? You know what? It's a great way to, to not have that happen to you. Just don't fire a gun. That's it. <laughs> yes, I mean, that's an easy way. It, it, it's, it's horrible. Yeah, if someone does fire a gun and you are close enough to hear and you, yeah, it hurts your ears. You get mm. um, what you were saying. Exactly. Yeah, there's tinnitus. Yes. Yeah. That would fucking hurt and be a pain, but. What what person mind. needs an AK forty seven or an AR fifteen rifle, which can which the AR fifteen that was I think one of the guns used in one of the most recent shootings or even the one that just happened. Why? What excuse can you have for that? Are you protecting yourself? At what point do you have a weapon that is a military grade weapon? How do you protect your... When are you going to have hundreds of people around you? Because those weapons are designed to kill hundreds of people really quickly, as we freaking saw. He was able to... In, that that whole shooting lasted 10 minutes. Mm. He, he shot all those people. Mm. Mm, At what point disturbing. do you say, oh, yeah, I use that for my hunting. I need that for hunting or my protection. Mm. What... What, like, a deer... Or moose or whatever is in a huge fucking pack with other ones, and you're like, I'm just gonna shoot all of them. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, it's so true. Um, yeah, you don't need it. It's no. overkill. It is. It is. I think I was. I saw. Um, I saw Jimmy Kimmel say that like if you had forty, like this guy had forty-seven guns. He said, um, 
goes, if anyone else had 47 of anything, like if you had 47 cats, right, you would um, be called a crazy cat person, right? And, and there might be, and, and then your neighbours might call a government agency, Animal Control, to come and take your cats yeah, away. RSPCA. So why don't they do the same with guns? Why did this guy need 47 guns? What is he protecting himself from? Yeah, I know. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, so a bit of a change up of um, story now. We're going to come into some uh, local uh, stuff. We've got the Australian uh, postal vote for the same-sex marriage going on right now. Um, we've had quite horrible ads um, from the No campaign. I don't mean to be biased, but when you're voting no to disallow a fellow human being, a same right that you are born with, because we're like, when were you born straight? You know, yeah. it's the same people for. It's the same with people. When were you born gay? Like, you know. Sorry, I stuffed up that. When did you realise you were straight? Sorry, not when were you, you know, born gay. Yeah. yeah. So that's a question straight people should answer. When did you realise you were straight? And they go, No, I was born this way. Obviously, mm. right? Because yeah. they see. Anyway, what they've said, I think the best way that the No campaign, what they have really tried to do is confuse the hell out of Australians and yeah. get the people who are unsure about who to vote, why to, how to vote, which one to vote for. No campaign is really uh, the, the ACL, the Australian Christian Lobby, have put a few ads on the television, which have been fairly horrible, uh, confusing people about the vote, which is should... Um, we allow same-sex couples the right to marry. Um, yeah, that ad that I've seen. The one with the, uh, where they try to confuse you and say about the safe schools. Yeah. Yeah, which is a program that is supposed to cheat, that is supposed to teach um, kids about uh, gender fluidity and basically everything they need to know. Gay, lesbian, like they, they, they're just blowing it up out of proportion. Yeah, like saying, oh, I don't want my like kids to. dressing up as a same sex role playing. Exactly. If your kid dresses up when they're a three year old and they get in a dress, you think it's adorable, but if they role play at school, what's there's the problem? People it's that, so stupid, at Isabel's but that's the problem. Child care, that there's a couple of little boys and they were putting dresses on. Huh, who, so cares? who cares? Mm. So the fact is, that is how the no campaign has worked. I'm a yes voter because. Um, I just believe that everyone should have equal rights under the law. If we don't, if we discriminate against one section of people, then who's to say that we're a great country? Like, we've been far too many people that we've disenfranchised throughout history. Mm. And uh, don't call, uh, won't say white, don't call, call it white guilt if you want, but at the same time, our ancestors were horrible people to the Aboriginals, right? We've been horrible to just pretty much anyone in general um, that isn't what they deem as normal. Mm. So, you know, you needed to be rich and fancy back in the 19th century or so. And the way you married was if you have five horses to give to the family and they have six horses, then you are all going to be rich. So doesn't matter if we don't love each other. You know, that's how they worked out. But it wasn't... It was a business proposal. It wasn't, I love you, you love me. Let's go home and watch Barney. For a happy family. <laughs> so you obviously voted yes. I voted yes just for the reason for, yeah, just wanting to have the same rights as everyone else. So what did... Uh, how did you come about your vote and, and why? Um, me, personally, I... I really don't mind either way. I really don't care either way. I mean, obviously saying that I care about equal rights. Yeah. I just... I don't know. It's not a big issue for me. Yeah. It's definitely important. Don't get me wrong. But it's not top of my personal... Personal ...agenda. List. Yeah. But I still voted yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's where I stand. What about you, Erin? How did you... What did, where did you stand on this issue? So I voted yes... No question asked, like, yep. simple. Um, I just think everyone deserves the right to marry who they love yep. and be with that person. No matter um, what. No yeah. matter what. And, like, I would hate to be um, in any one of the, 
in their shoes and to be like, you know, I love you and I can't marry you. Yeah. Because that's what the law says. Well, um, yeah. And I thought the you know our wedding was one of you know one of the best days of our lives mm. and being able to share it with our friends and family. Exactly. And just thinking back to being like a couple of you know guys who want to get married or a couple of girls who want to get married, they can't because of the stupid law. And I think everyone deserves the right to be happy. And if they want to marry the person they love, then they should. Love yeah. equals love. Exactly. That's it. And yeah, that's like exactly I know a few right. people that are gay and. It has not affected my life at all. Mm. They are probably like a few pe- people who are more friendly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't like I don't judge anyone. Yeah. Well, I've got a situation. I'll hold the names obviously to protect the privacy. But I have a um, person I know in my life who happens to be gay, and uh, they go to church, and they um, they were. I find it. I found it a very weird situation for him, um, being that he goes to church and he loves going to church, which is fine, obviously. Is he full Christian? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he goes to church all the time. Like, yeah. um, reads his Bible, does all the good things, but he just like he's changed his mind. He's changed to a yes voter, not because he's gay, but he's changed to a yes voter because he's seen that it's inevitable. So he was originally against gay marriage even though he was gay and for a while it really struck a chord with me going well how can you believe that when in the bible it says you yourself as a person are an abomination and it made me like just really struggle to understand where he was coming from so um once I started to talk to him a little more I did get his idea that he was just like basically well I can have a civil union here in Australia, blah, blah, blah. I don't really necessarily want the religious wedding, which I, which I understood too. Well, I just think, no well, if you don't want to have, have the religious wedding, you can have a... Like, if yeah, we make it legal s- under the law, it becomes civil marriage. You just have it how you want it. Exactly. How you and your partner want it to have. Something yeah. simple, something big, and something... It doesn't matter. There are plenty of people who are single. There, there are people who are single their whole life, never, ever, ever get married, but they just, you know, they have partners from time to time. Do we put pressure on them to be getting married or having a civil union? No. Mm. Do they have the right to have those things? Yes. Like, I just don't, I just can't fathom how you can say no to giving rights equally to everyone under the law. So, as much as I respect the rights of the no campaign to have their opinions, just know you're wrong. Um. <laughs> just, you, you, it's not affecting you. I just don't understand it. I can't get my head it's around not, it. So I don't know why they feel the need to involve themselves in other people's lives. Yeah. Um, and just, like, get involved in other people's business um, when it's not going to affect what you're doing in your life. Um, they should just focus on their own life and exactly. I mean, you don't you don't worry about what's going on next door, uh, no, you your neighbour's house. You, you don't. don't intrude on their privacy. Mm. And you know, why should you? Ma- why should you be? Thi- wh- why are they just all thinking? Just live your life and stop worrying about. Why other are they people? all thinking about like oh, oh? Think of the children. I do think of the children. I think of all the kids <laughs> that are killing themselves. Yeah, well, how happier exactly. and easier it's going to be for a guy or a girl rate. to come out and be like, I'm gay, and not having to worry. Mm. Mm. That's about especially what I'd like. If our daughter was gay, I would rather her. I would. I wouldn't even want her to come out and be like, "I'm gay." I want her to just come home with a girlfriend and be like, "Oh, this is my girlfriend." And be like, exactly. "Yeah, no worries." That's cool. That's the norm. Like, I don't want her to treat like, yeah, her bringing a guy home to her bringing a girl home. Go, ah, oh, what? She can what's come this? out. She can come out if she wants to. But I'm just saying that's what that's my mentality and thinking about it. It's like, yeah, well, if you just... just bring a girl home and said that's my girlfriend, I'd be like, cool. Yeah, Whatever. No, no worries. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm, I'm blah blah blah. Nice to meet you. Exactly. Like, yes. I'm I just gonna don't, be the, I'm going to treat yeah my my daughter or my other kids boyfriend or girlfriend the same. Mm. Like I'm not going to go. Oh. Well, mm. Anyway, yeah, it's just moving on to a bit of a, a funnier topic. I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks. Uh, cereal oh. and. Uh, <laughs> As we said before, we did record this podcast earlier, but we did uh, we did a bit of it. we fucked it up a little bit. So you, you did, cereals, you, soggy. And what would you What would you say? Lines. Would you like? Do you like soggy cereal or do you like crunchy cereal? And what what cereal do you like the most? What's your favourite cereal? I'd say. 
Um, and those listeners at home, um, we'll also try and set up a, uh, a uh, email or something like that for you to send in emails to us. Um, hopefully we'll have something for the next podcast for you to send in um, where we can ask you guys questions. But uh, we'll send this out anyway. Uh, what's, what's your favourite cereal and do you guys also like crunchy or soggy? But uh, for now, we'll go to Aaron and Michael and see what, uh, see what they like first. I mean, I like, I like chocolate cereals. Yeah. Um, Milo They're cereal, rice nice. bubbles. Um, I do like crunchy nut. Um, I do like Nutri-Grain as well. Um, oh, the- Nutri-Grain. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot about Nutri-Grain. Nutri-Grain. We should get Nutri-Grain. Yes. So good. Yeah. It's so um, good. I'm not a big fan. I don't like Go on. Sorry. I was just thinking like rice bubbles. I think they're just oh, like... Fuck you, rice bubbles are awesome. I know, but I'm just... Rice bubbles are basically just Cocoa Pops. With no flavour. I know that's... No, but it... That's no, what it I'm kind of s- does have flavour. That's what it I'm does. saying. Like, I just... Yeah. I've never been a big fan of rice bubbles, but honestly, I haven't been a big fan of just cereal... Snap, crackle and pop. ...in general, <laughs> because I've always just had toast because I don't like soggy cereal. Yeah. I just hate the taste of it, but... I mean, that brings us to the topic of... Do you like... Soggy cereal or crunchy. Yeah. Um, I myself like both. Yeah. What do you like, Sean? Um, I suppose it depends what yeah, type both. of cereal. Guess what? It, it's just what I'm in the mood for, I guess. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, I'm going to eat this straight away and it'll be crunchy, yum, yum, yum. But then other times yes. it's like, I'm going to leave it for 30 seconds. Other times it's like, I leave it for five minutes and it's nice and soggy. Yeah. 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 Fair enough, I suppose, whatever mood you're in. But yeah, I just don't honestly don't like soggy cereal. I like to have it nice and crunchy. You, you know what I really like? Do you eat wheat bix? No. I had wheat bix. I like in, them dry. In winter. <laughs> and what I do is I put the milk in. Yeah. Chuck it in the microwave for about 30 seconds and you'd have hot, warmish wheat bix. Oh, the smell is so bad. Yeah, your dad, <laughs> you said your dad used to have that too, yeah. which is funny that her dad had it and I yeah. did before yeah. we even knew that story. I do like Cocoa Pops. Uh, and, uh, um, Cocoa Pops are nice. And Honey Crunch, which is the Coles brand one. Yeah. Cocoa like, Pops, give it. I think I think all I think all, 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 all these cereal brands pops. should be giving us money for all this kind of nice. free advertising we're like giving them. I don't know. Kellogg's, give us money. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> we're mentioning all their all their brands. They should give us the money. Fruit Loops are pretty good though. Fruit Loops. I did yeah. say Fruit Loops are on special. <laughs> Ooh. Get sanitarium up and go is 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 it tastes like horse shit. I'm sorry. Sanitarium. Yeah, that just sanitarium up and go nah. or just up and go like no way. Ugh. Not gonna like, yeah. not gonna deal with that. It's like well, thick well. and just yeah. It's yeah, gross. it's um it's pretty bug. Yeah, we don't mm. want to go too much into that. Yeah, have Talking you guys been about, watching um Rick and Morty? Rick and, and Morty, I have, I have. I have. Yes. yes. Um, Sean's got me onto that. Yes. <laughs> Specifically, the Szechuan sauce. Szechuan sauce that was just recently released at McDonald's. That's right. In America. 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 Well, we'll have a <laughs> um, So I read an article and it was limited 20 sauce packets per bottle. Um, uh, sorry, per fucking store. Store. 20? Um, how, how big was it? Were they like, were they bottles or were they, they like were, packets? No, sorry. They were individual serves of the sauce and it was selling for fucking $60 per 50 mils. Wow. Sauce. Was uh, that in, in the store? No, no, no. That oh. was on eBay. Oh, so people were like getting it and then putting it on yes. eBay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. that's so clever. Yeah. Would you um, Would you try that? I probably would not. I would not feel safe buying Why like that? An, open, an open packet of sauce oh. over the internet. Yeah, um, if it was open. But I what mean, if they in not, touched not it? Not just that. Like, on top of that, you don't know. I yeah. mean, you could have bought just some El Cheapo sauce at... Your local grocery store and uh, taking a, a uh, syringe and selling it on eBay for sixty dollars. You'd hope that off. syringe was clean. That's dirty. That's, that's disgusting. <laughs> I would not buy something with a syringe off offline. No way. Mm. Mm. Ugh. That's just like AIDS screaming at you. <laughs> 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 How would you trust someone with a syringe? Like, why do you have a syringe? What was it used for? Is it clean? And why are you putting shit, in, like, sauce in it to sell exactly. it online? Exactly. Yeah, I like that. It is a bit That is good thinking. But... Just give me a fucking bottle with sauce. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, jeez. It's just, um... 
some people. I, I don't know. Maybe I would try it. If, if it was available to get here. Yeah, I would. And they did a special thing. Maybe I would so line up like and try it. So like a side to be like with nuggets or It was or It was literally like what Rick says in the show. He says... Back in 1998, when Mulan came out, they released this special sauce for the Happy Meal McNuggets, and it was called ah. Szechuan Sauce. And they brought it just specifically for a movie. No, no TV show. Mulan was a movie. Oh, sorry, movie. Oh, but, oh yeah, yeah, but now that yeah, that Rick and Morty have just like made it so much, uh, given it so much like notice in popular culture that yeah, McDonald's took notice and went, hey, let's let's bring it back. I do mm. like Chinese Szechuan sauce though. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, then you'd like it. You probably would like it. <laughs> Just for be random. <laughs> oh, dude. We should make our own Szechuan sauce. Szechuan. Szechuan. I hated Szechuan. when people used to ask me, what's in that? Or how do you, like, what's that? And I used to yeah. try to say it. And I could be like, Szechuan. 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 And I'm just like, um, I'll just have to ask the chef and get back to you. And, it, like, the chef wouldn't actually tell me exactly what was in it. So it was hard to be like, um, what oh. kind of flavour is it? That's a bit annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Someone's like, what kind of spicy? Yeah. yeah, I got um, I got a question to ask you guys, and I don't know, I'm I'm conflicted about it, but how old do you reckon is too old to dab? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and what dab are we talking about, Sean? We we are talking about. <laughs> There's a couple the, there. We're talking about the the dance move known as the dab. So we're not the one made about, famous by that by so Logan Paul. We're not talking, we're not talking and Jake about. Paul. We dab, dab life. <laughs> It's the actual See how fucking movie. awkward we know, look when it we just do feels it. Feels weird. We're too white. Let's put on no, some. No, but if we had music, you, if we let's had, put on. Okay, let's put on some. If we had music and we were doing like a, you know, a what good song? dance. Let's put on some music then. I don't know. Little John. No, but I don't think that's the right dabbing music. You need more beady. Bit of like. What have we got? Bit of hip hop. Bit of hip hop, eh? Okay, how about um? Let's. What about a hip? Hop, hippie, hop. What's that song called? Rapper's Delight. I don't, on ha- that. I don't have that. I have that. Put on that, Sean. You might have it, Aaron. Sean. You don't have it. I'm putting it on what YouTube. What about... <laughs> I oh, no, I got one. I put no, on something else. Put on that. Sean. Yeah. Fuck you. Okay, I'll put it on. Rapper's Delight, here it comes. I know uh, some of the put words. On, put, on, put on something else, then, Sean. Oh, so now that I've got it, just you're put like, that on for now. Then think of something else. Like seriously, no, but we just yeah. You, I think you need to be in the right kind of music and the tune and get the rhythm and actually have like a proper dance, not just like look like a lunatic. Like I know I'm not saying that I can dance good, mm. but I feel like I I could probably dance okay. If I've had enough right to drink, I'm sure I'll dance appropriately. Hang on. I, I don't think it's the right dabby music. Let's go the actual yeah. like, proper. There we go. If it's like surround sound. <laughs> nah, it's not. I feel, I feel like it's... No, nah. that's way too... That's, it's that's kind of like another enough. one bites the dust upbeat. Anyway, you get it. I'll put on, I'll put on that little John, mate. Little John and the East Side Boys. Yeah, anyway, so... And then you like... Dab. <laughs> Isn't there two dab. kinds of way you can dab? <laughs> it looks so funny. You can dab to pretty much anything. It's a statement. And then, and then you can do like the really it's subtle one. You're just like, yeah. You know the dab move like dance. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like All right, there. Yeah. I think, I think, I think. I think we've confirmed yeah, that. Yeah. I think yeah, that. Yeah. I think that we've confirmed just that. Just not I, let loose. Yeah. You know? I know. That's why I said get enough wines into you. I think. I think that we've confirmed forward. that I should not dab. I'm 25 and white, and I should. Uh... Yeah. That doesn't come if you want. I'm I white. I'm female. I don't think and... it's an old thing. I think it's. <laughs> it's the rhythm thing. Well, Michael just thing said that, that I did all right. <laughs> yeah, you did. You were fine. Yeah, because I. I gotta, you gotta I, listen. You gotta have the right music, and you gotta be in the right like. Just like, uh, well, I was like at you a, can't be stiff. Like I was at a um, well, I was at my mate's rapping. Let loose, um, just who, I was at a rap, a rap gig recently at my mate uh, Steve. Did the wave. Um, rapper named Junior. Check him out on Facebook. Um, he's um, we we did the whole eight mile. Like remember an eight mile? You remember yes. eight mile? And they put their hands up and they're going ooh ooh. Yeah, we did that, and I felt so awkward and out of place because I was like. 
I feel like the whitest dude here. Am I allowed to be here? Am I allowed to do this with them? Should I join in? And then I ended up just having a fantastic time. But I remember watching them um, and they were doing, yeah, they would dab every now and again. And I was just like, oh, they do it really subtly. But they, they've got the, yeah, it's yeah, all about the you rhythm. You just automatically They just had go, the swagger like, oh, on the dab. stage. Like, you got to, like, actually and it was be like, mm, it was dancing fucking and awesome. be in tune, be loose. And you can't be stiff dancing. And I, think just, it's, yeah, just, I think it's just, I think it's the dancing. It's just got to, you got to have the rhythm in you. So, um. I've always... Yeah, um, just had rhythm, in you, yeah. rhythm and just always wanted to dance when, um, I've always had music on and just wanted to dance with music, so. Mm. No, yeah, just <laughs> to dance, with, to with, dance music. with music with music and, yeah. and always <laughs> wanted to dance with it. She said music just, like three times. I know, I repeat so music. Funny. Specific. <laughs> yeah. With yeah. music. Exactly. Yeah. Righto. I thought it was, um. I guess I guess I just have to. I guess if you want to dance like that, just go for it. Dance like no one's watching. I don't think there's a certain age. Just do it. Whoever, when you ever dance in public, unless you go into the club or you're at a wedding, when else are you dancing in public? Yeah, most um, of the time you don't give a shit. Yeah. Who goes to the club anymore? I mean, I'm too old maybe for that at shit. work. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you just feel like breaking down into a move. Bit of a move. But bit of a apart spin. From that, when you're on the grill, you're just like, oh yeah, that I flipped that egg. So it's uh, over easy, your, and then and then you're marching and then the you, you flick it out. You, ready you just, for service, and there's no like there's no serve it up like that. That's do. what he does. Break out into dance. Yeah, do you no know one's Dave? there. Oh, just have when you you're cleaning seen up, Dave you get music on cleaning up. Work? No. Have you ever seen him break into dance? No. Okay. When you ever see that shit, it is the funniest shit ever. He just is comes up the kitchen hand. The kitchen hand, Dave. So like he just comes into the kitchen. And he's just like. Just like this. <laughs> just like just listening to the beat and that's all he fucking does. For like literally ten seconds oh and that's God. it. <laughs> and it's called doing the Sean. Uh, uh, sorry, not the Sean, the fucking day. Doing the day. Doing the Sean. And he just he just breaks out into like this. He just like no movements apart from this. And that's all he does, and it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that's funny. Wow. Um so much so, I've started doing it too. <laughs> have you ever noticed? No. I'm just like I haven't fucking actually. grinding. No. Okay. I have you're, to keep an eye out for it. Now. I have to keep an eye out for it next time, I guess. But yeah. Anyway, Good Michael, fun. I don't know if yes. Sean and I told you about, about this possum incident. No, not at all. Um, so ever since we moved in, we've heard that we've had possums in the house and we thought, oh, okay, that's fine because we've heard them inside. And then outside on the roof. And we're like, yes. okay, that's fine. It's not a big deal. And then um, a couple of days ago... Um, Did I, it sneak into the house? No. I came home with Izzy after childcare and I was working. And I went to the lounge room and I was like, smelling and going, what's that smell? And I just thought, oh, maybe it was just, you know, a bit of like weed smell and stuff like that. Um and didn't really take much notice. Um, yeah. Sean came home from work later that day and he was like, oh, what's that smell? And I was like, oh, I thought maybe it was just, you know, a bit of weed smell from you guys. Um, mm. And he was like, nah, I think that might be like the possum. It might be dead. Mm. So I was like, okay. So I rang the landlord and I was just like, um, I think we might have a possum that's dead because we can smell something and we haven't heard much movement. And he was like, okay, well, I'll send someone around tomorrow. So the next day, um, around three o'clock, the landlord come over with a couple of handy guys, mm. and they um, they came inside. <coughs> Sorry, and they were like, "Where's the smell mainly at?" And I said, um, "The lounge room and the kitchen." And they were like, "You know, like smelling and stuff and sniffing." Like, oh, we can't smell it, What you know. And I was just like, oh, well, it's every now and then, but you can smell it. It's here. We've had possums. We can um, we can hear them and now, like, it's suddenly stopped. Mm. Um, so they just kind of had a look around or whatever. And then mm. the smart thing was that I think that I would have that I would have done if I was a person who was coming to see about a smell would have gone into the manhole Ooh. and had yeah. a look around. That's what I thought. But... All the, and there was two guys that came with the landlord and those two guys um, got a ladder and they were looking on the roof. And the landlord did show me a couple of spots um, outside in the front 
where there's a little bit of gap. And he's like, oh, this is where the possums would have gotten in. I was like, okay. So obviously the landlord's told the two guys and all they've done is put like tin or like hard, like foil, like aluminium foil. Mm. Um, but like a tin kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, texture and like covered up the hole. Yeah. And then they've climbed up on the roof. And if when you're walking back to the house from like this way, yeah. um, you can see like bits of silver that on little like spots of the roof that they've just like, obviously there was a tile there and they've covered it up. Yeah. So honestly, I don't think that they've done they, anything they what I've the asked them to do. All, they didn't think. get the possums out because they didn't come inside to go into the manhole because that's the only way you can get to the inside of the actual yeah, yeah, house yeah. because we've yeah. heard them in the kitchen, in the wall and in the lounge room. Mm. So we're like, okay, they stayed until whenever and then they fucked off and left. Mm. That night, Sean and I... And Izzy were trying to get to sleep. And... Possums couldn't get out. Possums couldn't get out. Um, they obviously go in and out and whenever they want, and yeah. especially at night time. Yeah. But they were, like... They were scratching the walls Running, and stuff. like, full pelt from one room, like, one top of the roof to the other yeah. and trying to find a, a place to, like, get out. Um... So, yeah, they were obviously panicking and freaking out and making so much noise and we couldn't bloody sleep. Yeah. We're okay. like, how are we supposed to sleep with this possum mm. making so much noise? They didn't even come to remove it and say, oh, maybe they're just making it up. Mm. It's now like, we're going to have dead possum and so then they're going to have to come and get it anyway. Mm. They didn't do anything. What I asked, I said that we've got a smell. It must be a dead possum. Um, they didn't look. Yeah. Mm. To see. So it all could have been avoided. Yeah, and all they've done now is blocked it off so the possum. Are they I'm pretty still sure in? there's. I'm pretty sure there's two possums. Yeah, they're, they're in here. They're still and here. I think now I don't know if there's still the two or maybe there's one, but the other if there is still one, it can't get out. So we Sean and I were saying that I think it's just going to slowly die because it's not going to be able to get any food. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's blocked in there, so it it was making so much noise and it just kept scratching and scratching. Um, and when it's like, we're never going to get to sleep. Mm. Um, it was horrible. <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. Pretty loud. But we haven't heard too much noise from the possum no, lately. Yeah. Which is good, but yeah. That, that was like, what, maybe an hour ago? Yeah. yeah. That was Every now and then you still hear them, but I just couldn't yeah. believe it. No. Like, it was just, do you do your job properly. Mm. But, anyway, and yeah. so... I guess we're, that's probably about, um, we'll wrap it up now for the first ever episode of the podcast. Um, I just wanted to quickly get back to the, uh, shooting. Um, we made this point in our first podcast we made, but then forgot to record. I wanted to re make it again. Uh, the politicians should, uh, stop, uh, the petty, sorry, not petty. They shouldn't, uh, the politicians over in America, the Republicans especially, who are under the NRA's thumb uh, and their money, they need to start growing a spine. Um, thoughts and prayers aren't going to do anything anymore. Unfortunately. It's change and action which needs needs to happen in America. People are dying on, his, <clears throat> on their streets every single day. There was another mass shooting a couple of days ago, but no one hears about it because do you know that it, a mass shooting is four and over? So there was five oh. people killed in a mass shooting a couple of days ago, oh, okay. but no one hears about that shit because it's not great. It's not big enough news. So yeah. those politicians over there really need to think about what they want to leave behind yeah. when they're gone for their country and the safety that they have for this, that they should be instilling for their citizens for generations to come. Yeah. Anyway, those are my uh, two cents on that issue uh, right at the end. Uh, thank you all for listening uh, today. Uh, this has been the first uh, podcast. We hopefully keep uh, bringing more uh, to you guys as we go along. We'll definitely uh, try and set up an email or something like along those lines uh, if we get some followers and uh, send in some questions for us. Um, anyway, That'll do us. I'm Sean. I'm Aaron. I'm Michael. And that was the 420 Project, and we'll see you next time. Wubba lubba dub dub. See you later. Bye. <laughs>